Hi folks, Dana Leslie here from AddictedToTheMouse.com, and this is the top 12 mistakes first-timers make going to Walt Disney World. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right, let's get into it. Number 12, under planning. Oh my gosh, under planning. That is such <laughs> a big one. <laughs> so whenever you go to Walt Disney World, it is really, really vital that you uh, plan far out in advance. Um, it is 40 square miles of pure awesomeness, but it is kind of overwhelming if you go. Absolutely. And that's not to say you can't have a great time if you make a spur of the moment trip, but you definitely aren't going to get to do all the coolest stuff. That's right. So from planning your dining uh, pretty far out, uh, six months out to be uh, exact, yeah. to figuring out where you're going to stay, tickets, when you're going, especially now with uh, new updated ticket uh, pricing per day, it's pretty important to at least start looking at this thing at over six months out. So. Absolutely. All right. Number 11. Wearing comfortable clothes. Oh my goodness. I have not, I can't even imagine whenever I see the women that are wearing high heels walking through the park. I don't, I don't understand. I don't understand <laughs> it either. It does not <laughs> compute. Um, yeah, guys, you're going to be walking miles and miles and, and I mean, and my, miles and miles my, and miles. My, my Apple Watch like <laughs> gets mad at me because I'm walking so far. It doesn't <laughs> count that high. Um, we, we legit walk at least 10 miles a day when yeah. we're at Disney World. So wear comfortable shoes for sure. And then comfortable outerwear. Um, it can get a little bit chilly in the winter months, but um, even in the winter months, it'll get pretty warm um, on a lot of days in Florida. Mm -hmm. And then it rains quite a bit. Yeah. So ponchos, rain jacket, something like that is important to throw something on. Something to be comfortable with. So if you get wet, whether it's a, a, a pop-up thunderstorm in a, in a warm sun summer afternoon or um, a water ride, uh, you want to be comfortable and you want to be able to dry off after. Yep. All right. Number 10, buying the wrong tickets. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> <laughs> so there are different levels of tickets that you can buy. Uh, I think uh, you've had multiple people come and ask you um, how they can go see Harry Potter at Disney World. Yeah. Um, which, if you didn't know, Harry Potter is not at Disney World. So um, figure out what you need for tickets, um, but there are different types of tickets that let you get into the water parks. Then there are the four big theme parks at Disney World. Um, there are park hoppers, which lets you go to multiple parks per day as opposed to just one park per day. Um, and now there is a, uh, a, a new ticket uh, date-based system that you actually tell them what day you want to go. Um, and they tell you how much it's going to cost. It sounds like these people need a travel agent. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. All right. Anything to add on no. tickets? All right. No. Number nine, staying off property. Like as a good or a bad thing? I think it's a mistake. Um, I, I think yeah, we've stayed off property some before. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think as a first timer to go, to really immerse yourself in the experience, there is so much theming in the hotels and the resorts. Um, on Disney World, and it, you're just, uh, it's the bubble. Yeah, there is something to be said about staying inside that bubble. Um, yeah, and you can uh, meet characters, you can dine with characters, you can go Disney transportation, um, and you can actually save a lot of time doing that as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Staying on property is, is a must. Number eight, underestimating travel time. Oh, we have done this before. I'm telling you. So, <laughs> <laughs> Again, Disney World is 40 square miles, and there are multiple theme parks, water parks, mini golf places, um, shopping district, you, you name it, it's there. Um, and so are uh, 300,000 of your closest friends. <laughs> uh, so, uh, actually, I don't know how many people are on Disney World I property at any given time, but it's a lot. Um, and the traffic is kind of a nightmare. It, um, it, well, it it's a nightmare be. getting to and from Disney World for in Florida. I mean, we've sat on the highway for hours and stuck traffic, but once you're on those 40 square miles, it's awesome. Um, but give yourself plenty of time, especially in the mornings when everybody's trying to get into the parks. Um, buses is probably your primary form of transportation, but now with Uber and minivans and monorails, and you can walk from certain resorts to certain parks. Like you can go from the Contemporary Walk across the parking lot and be in Magic Kingdom, which is yeah. awesome. Um, but there's also boat rides. You can boat to Disney Springs. You can boat to the Magic Kingdom. You can boat to Hollywood and over to Epcot on the boardwalk. Mm -hmm. And um, none of it is super, super quick. That's true. And just allowing yourself plenty of time to get from point A to point B whenever you're using whatever form of transportation. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> so number seven is uh, not planning dining. So this kind of goes into that not planning, but um, 
you know, there are there are fine places to eat. There's fine quick service places, and and some really some of our favorite places to eat are quick service places. But um, yeah, to to be able to plan in advance and get some of those really awesome hard to get dining reservations is is really kind of spectacular. So there are really really like you said good quick service places. Don't think you're going to eat just hamburgers and hot dogs the entire no. time. I mean, you can. There are those quick service places, but yeah. it would be a, a huge mistake. There are some of the best restaurants that we've ever eaten at on Disney property. Yes. Um, so do your research. Check it out. Um, we've got some guides on how to choose that. Another great resource is Disney Food Blog. They've got a great uh, resource over there on how to choose your dining. But if you go to Disney World and you're not loving every bite of food you're putting in your mouth and trying new things, there is something wrong. There is something wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Number six is not scheduling Fast Pass Plus. Ooh, yeah. I mean, if if you're a fan of waiting in line for a by long all means. time, yep. Yeah, by all means, don't schedule your Fast Passes. But there, there is definite perk in using this Fast Pass system. Absolutely. Every day that you have a ticketed ad admission to the park, every person in your party that has their own ticket. Um, is got three guaranteed fast passes for them if they choose to use them. So if you're staying on property, uh, you can schedule those 60 days in advance. Um, that's another perk to stay on property. If you are staying off of property, you can schedule them 30 days in advance. So even if you have an annual pass and you live in Florida, you can still schedule fast passes 30 days in advance, whether you're going to the parks or not. Um, you can schedule all three um, in advance, but they all have to be done at the same park. Um, and then once you schedule those, um, once you use your last fast pass, you can go into a rolling fast pass. So you can schedule them while you're in line for that last fast pass. But um, if you wait till you get there, you're not going to get the best rides because they right. are limited. Yeah. And I mean, you are welcome to stand in line. We just try to avoid them as at all humanly possible. Yeah. <laughs> Number five is sleeping in. Ah. Uh. Now, we've been a bunch, and we like sleeping in, I especially like sleeping if in. we take advantage of uh, late-night stuff. But we plan sleeping in kind of strategically, right? So we if do. we sleep in, it, we obviously we know we're not going to miss anything big. However, if it's your first time, the least crowded, and uh, there's the no coolest. time, and the coolest, <laughs> there's no time that's not crowded. But the least crowded time of any day is when the park first opens, or what we like to call rope drop. So if you get there when the park first opens, that is when you're going to have the best chance of standing in a standby line, which is not having a fast pass, and not waiting forever. Yes. Yeah. So we usually schedule those fast passes starting about 1030 or so. Right. And we go to rope drop and hit as many attractions as we can before those lines start getting long. Number four. This is kind of uh, on the same or in the same vein as sleeping in. This is not having a built-in break. Oh. So if you don't sleep in and you get up early and you go to rope drop and you don't take a break in the middle of the day just for something, it could be sitting down to a meal, it could be leaving the park and going back to the resort, maybe maybe a, a swim, uh, an hour in the pool, an hour nap, or maybe just uh, sitting down and having a drink at, at your, your favorite lounge. Um, it, it's gonna it's gonna wear on you. You're gonna get tired. Yeah, and especially in addition, if you don't schedule a break in the week. So if you go parks back to back without breaks during the day, you're gonna be pretty tired and cranky by the end of that week. Kind of stepping on my toes because number oh three, no. <laughs> <laughs> number three is planning a break day. <laughs> so um, if you go, for which most people do, for um, five days or more, so most people try to make it rounded off at, at a week. Um, it is very highly advisable to schedule a rest day. Two full days in parks is very, very tiresome. Um, what we like to do is if we're there for six days, you know, have at least one down day, maybe two. Yeah. Um, maybe if you go in a, a holiday time of year and you have a Disney party, like a Mickey's Not So Scary um, or Mickey's Christmas um, party, very Merry Christmas. very Merry Christmas party, maybe uh, that has become like, kind of a, a half day so like if it's a six day vacation you can go four and a half days the half day being the party and that's kind of a half rest day yeah but it's absolutely vital to go ahead and schedule some rest time in your plan absolutely okay number two is expecting your kids to be someone that they really aren't <laughs> 
<laughs> this is true. <laughs> Let me tell you, kids get tired, and just because you spent thousands and thousands of dollars on this magical vacation does not mean that they're going to be any less tired or cranky. So, um, again, very important to schedule rest time for them. Yes. Um, and then just kind of go with the flow a little bit and, and let, uh, let them dictate uh, based off of how they're feeling. Um, we've passed many, many people in the parks that are just screaming at their kids and um, just pleading with them, like, you don't know how much time, how much money we've spent on this vacation. <laughs> yeah. Why don't you, why don't you, aren't you happier? <laughs> and I think what could also fall under this category, and hopefully I'm not stealing your number one, is um, kind of knowing their limitations on rides. Yes. So we have actually done that before where we've pushed a little too hard maybe and trying to get them to ride some rides that they really don't want to ride. Yeah. So, so. yeah, we've, we've, we've learned our lessons on that one too. Yes, we have. All right. Number one, are you ready for it? <laughs> 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 so number 12 was under planning. Number one is over planning. Oh, if you are good. new to Disney, uh, try your best. Yes, you absolutely want to have a plan, but don't pack every waking minute with something to do. It's number one, it's not going to happen. I can promise you that uh, a bus is going to break down. There's going to be a rainstorm. A ride is going to break down. Something is going to happen to throw your plan off. Yeah. And it's just going to be stressful. You're going to uh, feel like you have to fit it all in, which it's going to be impossible to do anyway. Resist that temptation. Yes. Schedule some nice meals. Schedule some downtime. Schedule your fast passes. And then just go with the flow. And live in the moment because I can't tell you how many fabulous memories we have from things that we never, ever planned. Absolutely. All right. You got anything else to pitch in? I think that's a fabulous list on 12 things that rookies should not do. All right. So thanks so much for watching. Uh, you, uh, worth melting for. <laughs> I almost said addicted to the mouse. Well, we're still that. <laughs> right. <laughs> Uh, so thanks so much for watching Worth Melting For. Go ahead and click that like button down below. Hit the subscribe button. If you like what you see, we'll post these videos once a week. And if you like what you see, maybe you'll like what you hear, go on over to addictedthemouse.com and check out our podcast. Yes, absolutely. So until next time. You've been watching Worth Melting For. <laughs>